I'm joined by Martin Tyler after this afternoon's 4 1 home win against Lewis. Martin, I was going to start asking about Andre McCollins' hat trick, but I understand that's in dispute, is it? Yeah, by Matt Drage in particular. Um, I, I don't know, I haven't seen it. I gather you have got some visual evidence, so maybe we'll have to weigh it up. And um, Drage said that uh, actually during the game he came over for a drink when there was an injury stoppage and said, You know, it was my goal and it wouldn't have gone in but for me. Um, obviously Andre's got a different point of view and of course because it now means the difference between two and a hat-trick it will be looked at. Um, I think we'd better leave it to the manager. I think he better decide and uh, I'm sure you'll show it to him when it's appropriate. There was further controversy, controversy about that goal as well, not between our players, but the Lewis goalkeeper seems to have a, a point to make to the referee with that second goal. Do you know what he was, he was on about? No, I, I don't know. I have to say I was surprised to see it as well. Um, but it was a really important goal because obviously we started the game really badly and we talked a lot about uh, the quality of Lewis's uh, set pieces and uh, Alan went to see them play against Cray on Wednesday and, and came back with um, the right sort of dossier as always and, and it was very frustrating. <laughs> we said don't give away silly free kicks, mark properly in the box and start the game better than he did at Hornchurch and all those three things didn't happen but I have to say uh, the lads picked themselves up and as the evening, uh, the afternoon wore into the evening we, we got better and um, I think the 4-1 flattered us I have to say but you know I think we were value for the victory. And how important was it for us to get a goal before half time to go in um, on level terms? Yeah, you never know with this group because they have got a fantastic capacity to um, to fight back, and uh, we do have a lot of potential goal scoring players in the team. And obviously, the two front men um, have been leading the way in that respect. And when you've got um, Ryan and Andre on the on the field, you always feel you've got a chance, even if you're in a worse position than we were when we were one down. When Ryan and Andre are in the form that they were in today, are they as good as anything in the league, do you think? Yeah, I do. I mean, obviously we've had some outstanding forwards here in our time. Bobby Trainer, club legend. Um, but I th think Bobby's ever perhaps been in a partnership that's worked quite as well. Carl Wilson Dennis will probably dispute that because he had a very good time with Bobby as well. But um, no, they're, they're great. They are different. Um, and they complement each other. And I think they're learning more as uh, each week goes by. Um, obviously, they've got... Um, um, with Javelon Campbell on the bench, they've got a bit of competition as well. So I think we should mention Javelon and Sean Ray and people like that, and Dee and um, uh, obviously Danny Sweeney came on as well. Uh, our, our players have been very good as a squad, not just as a team. And, and you look at Tom Jelly, for example, who's um, uh, you know got himself in the team now, and he's he's stuck with us right from day one of pre-season um, and been prepared to wait for his chance. Lewis finished the game with 10 men. Um, was there a red card for the number four? Was that a bit overdue? Should he have got a red card in the first half, do you think? I personally thought so. I think if I'd have been commentating on the game uh, from a neutral perspective, I would have expected it to be a, a sending off. But, you know, the referee said to us he didn't think the, um, the angle meant it was a, a clear goal scoring opportunity. When you see them given in the Premier League when players are just crossing the halfway line and, and they get sent off if it's, if it's the, the last defender and it's called a uh, goals for opportunity, but I have learned to be honest with you that there is a difference in interpretation between uh, the Barclays Premier League and the Ryman Premier League, and it's um, it's a privilege really to vacillate between the two. Um, it was 4 1 in the end today, but at 2 1, Rob Tolfrey made an amazing yeah. save, didn't we? We owe a lot to him this afternoon. We owe a huge amount to Rob Tolfrey, the club does, he's a wonderful club man. Uh, the players are having a, a bit of a night out tonight as, as a unit, and, and Rob's to the fore of organising that, and he's been here a long time and constantly he makes saves like that. And, um, Dows often says in the, in, when we're talking to the players before the game, we've got the best goalkeeper in the league and we believe that. And he proved it. And it's not about making saves, I and mean, all goalkeepers do that, but it's when you make the saves, the vital saves. And Yeah, I have to say at that point in the game, I thought you know, Lewis would score again, and but for Rob they would have done. We've got no game next week, so how important was it then to get three points today and the manner in which we got the victory today as well, particularly the second half? I think it's important to, to try and win every game, obviously in the position that we're in, we're there to be shot at, um, but the players are very ambitious, uh, it's just a freak of the fixtures, it's our own shortcomings that we haven't got a game next week really, if we'd been still in the trophy we would have done and I think to the fans, I think we, we, we ought to say that we are disappointed with the fact that we didn't have an FA Cup run or a trophy run. Um, maybe we're not so disappointed we're not having a London Senior Cup run because <laughs> we've had those the last two years and it hasn't done too much for our league form. Um, but the truth of the matter is you know, we're, we, we want to have a go at getting out of this league and um, 
Dowser said that right from the beginning. He's been backed by the directors who have been terrific. And it's not easy in non-league football. And I'm sure there are people from other clubs looking at this interview and watching our website and seeing what's going on at our club. They will know how hard it is to work to to keep non-league football alive. And it's been in my blood since I went to Woking, believe it or not, almost 60 years ago. 60 years ago on December the 18th it is. I went to see Woking play Kingstonian. As it turned out, I was taken as a very small child. You can work out the age after that. And, um, and I fell in love with the game. And uh, my fortune in my profession has taken me to much higher levels of, of work. But, you know, this is real football. And I'm very proud to be involved in it. Thanks very much. Let's hope you get to um, manage Kayser <laughs> as part of the managerial team. <laughs> cheers. Cheers, guys. Thank you.